you may be highlighting something that they need to work on and it's making them uncomfortable so because you're making them uncomfortable they want to make you uncomfortable they want to bring you down a notch hi welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name's malaysia and in this video we're discussing why people bother you why people bully you if you're someone that every environment you go into there's always that one person that bothers you that bullies you that goes out of her way to just try to bring you down but before i get into this video make sure to subscribe and press the like button because i'm speaking about this topic from their heart i've been through it and i still do experience this so not only am i going to share why people bring you down but i'm also going to share how to be unbothered by people who go out of their way to bother you let's get right into it something i've noticed from experiencing this a lot myself is a lot of people would rather focus on another person than to focus on themselves they'd rather focus on your faults they'd rather focus on your mistakes they'd rather focus on what you're doing and what you need to improve on than to focus on what they need to improve on than to focus on their faults and work on themselves unless it's someone's job to hyper fixate on what you're doing and to point out what you're doing then let them waste their time let them be losers <laughs> and put time and energy into something that isn't gonna give them any type of return it's gonna give you all the return because you can grow from these experiences sometimes the things that they're pointing out is true and it's important to really see if there's truth in what people are pointing out and what people are bothering you for before like <laughs> because there's a lot of room for growth and improvement. I know there's a difference between constructive criticism and just pure harassment, pure bullying, just pure ops, just bothering you for no reason. Even with ops, even with people that dislike you, sometimes you can gain a lot of knowledge from them. They will literally point out things that you didn't even realize about yourself. So then you can go and correct those things and improve upon them. Some people have to pay for that. Like some of your haters, some of your ops literally could be helping you become more stylish, to lose weight, to build confidence. Some of them might trigger you and help you to become a more um, assertive person. They're low key doing a lot of work for you. Instead of working on their own project, you know, working on their own sauce, they're helping add flavor to your sauce. Like. I'm just saying, you know, I like to alchemize situations. You know, some of us wouldn't be as amazing as we are today without dealing with some ops from our past. And I just wanted to add that in the beginning because it's an amazing perspective to have. And it's true. It's like, you're literally, you literally have nothing else better to do but to improve me. Okay, cool. How about it? But getting into why people bother you for no reason, why people believe for no reason, if you're someone that deals with this regularly, what I've noticed is a lot of people who get triggered by other people will, instead of looking internally to see why they're triggered and working on that, they will reflect that feeling of being triggered outward and harass that person, bully that person, hyperfixate on that person, bother that person. You know, have a problem with that person when there's not really a problem, but they'll create problems with that person because that person is creating problems within themselves just by existing. That person may highlight, you may be highlighting something that they need to work on and it's making them uncomfortable. So because you're making them uncomfortable, they wanna make you uncomfortable. They wanna bring you down a notch because they feel less, they feel like in a lower place when you're near them, when you're around them. And it took me a while to understand this. In the past, I used to think it was a me problem, but I honestly stay to myself. I'm not one to bother people. I mind my own business <laughs> and I'm a pretty great person. It's just a matter of like, if you come sideways at me, if you come on some fraudulentness, I'm gonna observe that and I'm gonna act accordingly. I'm not gonna sit here and allow it. The way that people are reacting to your mere existence is everything to do with them and nothing to do with you who you are is not something you need to explain who you are is not something you need to apologize for i mean unless you're hurting other people and you're harming other people and affecting other people then that's something you should probably reflect on but if you're over here minding your own business and someone is going out of your way to like bother you and fixate on you and bully you talk junk about you behind your back it's just dumb it's dumb being unhealed and immature and projecting their own issues onto other people instead of working on them. How to deal with people who go out of their way to bother you, with bullies, with ops, you ask? I personally, 
I've been told that I'm too nice, but there's a difference between being too nice and not giving people your energy. I personally feel like when people have a problem with you, when people are triggered by you, when people don't like you, they want your energy. They want to get a reaction from you. They want to take you out of your character. They want to make you feel like less because they see you as more. They want to bring you down to their level. So what I like to do is not give my energy. Be unbothered by whatever attempts people try to make at making you feel like less. Don't respond to things that are beneath you. Unless you feel like you need to, because some people need to be put in their place and there are some things that are just out of line. If there's something out of line or you feel like you need to say something, say something. Something definitely should be said eventually if someone keeps bothering you because if you don't say something, it'll continue. But what I will say is some people are not receptive. I've noticed that there are some people that are receptive and they can take feedback even if they dislike it and you can agree to disagree. And then there's some people who act like animals when they're hearing something that they don't wanna hear. They will talk over you, they will yell over you, it will turn into an argument when it doesn't need to turn into an argument. They'll bring up details that have nothing to do with the discussion just to make themselves feel like they have a solid argument. They'll bring up that time six months ago where you made a mistake when it has nothing to do with the discussion at hand. It will go in one ear and out the other. And in those scenarios with non-receptive people, I like to just bring in a third party. You know, something to make sure to ensure that they're not gonna act like a wild animal. They're not gonna talk over me to the point where I can't even say anything. They're not gonna pretend like they didn't hear what I said. With people like that, you gotta really plan out when to sit them down and discuss something, if that's something you wanna do. With receptive people, for me personally, if I'm really angry, I like to cool down before talking. If I'm not really bothered by it, I'll say it in a moment like, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Pull them aside. Didn't like what you did. Don't do it again. Period. And I like to observe how far people are willing to take it before I say something. If it's not something that's really crazy. That's just me. I feel like that can go south. <laughs> that can go south really fast if that person feels like they can treat you a certain way because you're not saying anything. But from what I've experienced, when you call something out right away, sometimes they'll like put on a mask and it's really hard to see how someone is feeling towards you. Like if you just pretend like you didn't see something and they do it again and they do it again, they're all not, they're acting funny again. They're, you know, being funny again. It's like, okay, we clearly have a problem. It's not just me thinking something because I saw it once. I know you're acting funny and you need to stop. And through observing that, I can also observe if they're a receptive person or not. I don't know about you, but I don't have time to waste. I do not like to waste my time. And if I'm gonna go out of my way to speak to you, the last thing I need is for you to not hear anything and just to be yelling and making a lot of noise and making a scene because you don't know how to take in feedbacks. There's some people who will literally ignore you and pretend like they didn't hear what you said. If you can, let them know what they're doing because a lot of the time, some people who are triggered don't even realize that they're triggered. Some people who are bothering you, some people who are bullying you, some people who are coming at you, they don't even realize that they're coming at you. They don't even realize the way that they are treating you. So it's really important to speak up and let give people a chance to change. Don't just like, I mean, if you want to dip, you can dip. But for me personally, I like to give people an opportunity. I will let them know. Or if I have to get a third party involved to let them know before I just like completely don't mess with them. Um, because we're all human and not all of us are aware of the way that we are. Like we all have faults and we're not aware of all of them all the time. Sometimes it takes years to learn something that needs to be worked on and by you pointing it out if they're receptive you really could be helping them in a huge way not just yourself you're helping them you're helping yourself because now they're not bothering you anymore and you're helping other people because now they're not going to do it to the other people so you speaking up really can make a huge difference if that person's receptive if that person's not receptive it doesn't matter what you say they la 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 and that's on them. I've been bullied a lot in my past because I was conditioned to not speak up. You know, being raised in a household where if you spoke up, you got in trouble, that can lead to you not being assertive. That can lead to you having anxiety, social anxiety. And I feel like a lot of us low key who struggle with speaking up or who struggle with, you know, being assertive or who struggle with setting boundaries, you have nice school syndrome and you're too nice, 
let me be the one to say that it's probably not your fault. It was probably the way you were conditioned and the way you were raised. I'm not blaming or pointing any fingers because I feel like with any way that you're raised, you're always gonna have some type of negative side effect to it. But just know that it's not your fault. If you were built, if you were designed to be nice, if you were conditioned and built to have social anxiety, that's not your fault at all. So don't beat yourself up because of it. And for a long time, I beat myself up because of it. I thought there was something wrong with me. But in reality, it was just the way that I was conditioned. It was the way that I was raised. It's what I was taught. And I had to learn to uncondition that for myself. And I'm still learning. I'm still working on myself. I'm still fighting that nice girl syndrome. It's not your fault, but it's your responsibility to learn how to speak up, to learn how to be assertive to learn boundaries, to practice standing up for yourself if that's something you're struggling with, if it's really hard for you to speak up. So you keep attracting people who take advantage of the fact that you're silent. It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to learn how to combat bees that are attracted to your honey, darkness that's attracted to your light. Because if you don't, you become one with the darkness. You get stung by those bees. It's up to you to learn how to put up a shield and not be bothered by people coming at you. It's up to you to learn how to protect yourself. It's really important to be observant because in the past, I just simply bothering became bullying. It just escalated to a point where I was even drunk because I was in denial of what I was observing. I was in denial of what I was seeing. You know, people would have problems with me and I would think to myself, oh, they don't have a problem with me, even though they're acting funny, even though, you know, I can see and I can feel that they have a problem with me. Well, I didn't do anything. So like, I'm not gonna say anything. Like they don't have a problem with me. You know, I'm not gonna, we don't have any issues. And then it got to the point where next thing you know it, it escalates. So be very observant how people come. If they come correct, if they come sideways or funny, don't just sit here and think the best out of people. If people are coming at you funny, take note of that. If you wanna call it out first sight, go ahead and do that. Or if you wanna sit back and observe their behavior so you can collect data and move accordingly, do that too. Be strategic about it, be strategic about it. Do whatever you need to do to protect yourself, to protect your light, to protect your honey. Attracting bees, attracting darkness, attracting haters, attracting ops, people who hyperfixate and bother you for no reason. It's just a side effect of being 101% that bitch. So if you are someone that's dealing with this, just know that there's something about you that's clearly really amazing. To have people taking the time out of a day to bother you, like you don't get time back. And for me, I have too many passions. I have too many talents. I have too many goals to be sitting here focused on someone unless it's my job. So if someone is taking time to focus on you, to bother you, to try to bring you down a notch, that says a lot about how high you are as a person. Not like 420 high, but like how amazing you are as a person to have people trying to come at you. If you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. And that says a lot about that person, about how much self-love they have for themselves to be so focused on someone else instead of themselves to spend time trying to bring someone down instead of spending time to rise. I also would like to add that if you're someone who is triggered by someone, if you're realizing that you may be the bully, you may be the person that's bothering someone, if you're that person and you want to change and become better and do better, what I've noticed is a lot of controlling people are emotional or overly emotional. So it's all a matter of getting a hold of your emotions. So you don't feel like you need to control said person that you may be bullying and bothering. You know, when you're triggered, work on a better and a healthier way to deal with that. Bullies, a lot of people who go out of their way to bother other people are just overly emotional. And instead of working on a healthy way to deal with their emotions and reflecting on what their emotions mean, they project, they spread havoc. So focus on emotional control. Really hone in on what's triggering you and work on that instead of bothering said person that's triggering you. You know, look and really ask yourself, what is it about this person that bothers you? And why is it, why is it a problem? Why are you personally taking it on as your own problem, as your own job to bring that person down? What makes you feel like you're not on the same level? And is there something you can do to get to that level? 
What things are you telling yourself that you can't do as well? You know, a lot of us are triggered by things that we want to do ourselves. We see it all the time on TV. I know I've had where the gay guy who's getting bullied, the bully is actually gay himself, but he's in the closet because he feels like he can't be gay. So he bullies a gay kid. You know, a lot of the time that is the scenario. You're bullying someone that has something that you want. You are triggered by someone that has something that you want. Why can't you have it? Why not try to work on ways that you can be happy within yourself instead of bothering those that trigger you because they are being themselves in ways that you're not. And that's not always the scenario, but really look inward. Really focus on when you're triggered, why you're triggered, and work on that. It is not that person's fault for triggering you. It is your fault for not knowing how to deal with that trigger. They don't deserve that. Spreading havoc, spreading hate, you know, being that way only blocks your blessings because you're over here bringing people down instead of bringing people up. How do you think life's gonna treat you if you're treating people in life like that? You never know how connected to God or source or universe, ancestors, spirit guys, you never know who, who that person's spiritual team is. Some of these people that you're bullying and that you're harassing has a whole spiritual team that will literally destroy your life <laughs> if you bother them. God will serve you that karma for them. Their ancestors will get that lick back for them. You literally will attract bad luck. Because if you really think about it, let's say that person's doing God's work and you're over here bringing them down. You're over here making their life worse. You're making them stressed out. You're not just bothering them. You're bothering whoever else is rooting for them up there. And whatever's up there rooting for them can do a lot more than what they can do and can see everything that you're doing. So you choosing not to heal yourself and work on yourself, not only are you wreaking havoc and collectively making the world worse by lowering everyone's vibration, but you're also attracting bad luck, possibly with who you're bothering. You know, God does not like ugly. Whatever you believe in, just know like I've seen some things. You can be a winner too, okay? We all can be winners. We all, we're all human. We all have our faults. It's just a matter of addressing them and working on them. And you can. Don't be those crabs pulling down that crab that's trying to get out of the bucket. It's loser energy, really. It's like, what are you doing? You should be trying to climb with that crab to get out of the bucket. Why are you pulling it down? Like, come on now, get, do better. And if no one wants to see you win, let me tell you, I wanna see you win. If you're an op watching this right now, if you're one of my haters, if you're one of the people that are triggered by me, and you're just watching me, you're just lingering, just know like even those ops, even my ops, I wanna see you win because we all can win. We all can win. <laughs> I literally wanna see everyone win. Everyone that I've had a problem with in the past, anyone, most people that I've had a problem with in the past, you know, most people that have hurt me, I still wish them the best. Like I don't wanna see people struggling. I don't wanna see people getting their blessings black. I don't like seeing people who feel like they're cursed. Like there's a way out, but only if you're willing to look for it. So I hope this video helped you. If you're someone that attracts bees, that attracts darkness because you're a huge beam of light, you know, there's many ways to deal with this. And this is just my perspective on the matter. I'd love to hear your feedback on if this video helped you and feel free to comment any requests on videos that you'd like me to make to help you towards creating a life that you want a lot easier. I see all of your guys' comments and I appreciate your time watching my content and being a part of this magical side of YouTube. I hope you have a great day. Make sure to believe, build, and achieve, and I'll see you in the next video.